we now switch our attention to the chase for the men's Super G title for 2019. I'm just a little bit crazy. <laughs> As evening sets on Andorra, Dominic Paris sets his sights on the World Cup Finals and the biggest race of his life. For tomorrow will be the first real chance to secure the most overall points in a season for Super G and be awarded the coveted prize of a World Cup globe. That's one of my biggest dreams to take a globe. That's what I mean. You had really good season, you had a lot of victories and you was the best. Tomorrow, I hope I'm good. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I hope it's good. Welcome to the Alpine Ski Racing World Cup Tour Finals. This is the final Super G of the men's tour in uh, Grand Valera Soldeo Al Tater in uh, the Principality of Andorra. Uh, one of the biggest winter resorts in the Pyrenees hosts the World Cup Finals for the first time. Dominic Paris really believes that he can not only win this race today, but that he can also do enough to take the title. The Italian, who began skiing as a three-year-old and competing at the age of six, claimed his first World Cup win in 2012. This season, the 29-year-old has ascended to new heights and stands as a favorite for the globe. I had great confidence on my skis, on my boots and everything. With all this confidence, every race that I saw, I was fast and I can, without mistakes, handling very well and that gave me more and more confidence. He developed for sure and now he, he's for sure very, very strong. He doesn't look that he comes in the finish area and maybe third, fourth, fifth place is, is, is enough. No, he won't to win. Paris has nine World Cup podiums this season, including the top spot in the downhill in Super G in Bormio and Kvitfeld, a first in the downhill and a third in Super G at Kitzbühel, and winning the downhill here the previous day. I was in very good shape after Bormio, and I won also the, the Super G in, in Kitzbühel. So with all this confidence, that's make you a little bit stronger and, uh, and I find I had the right condition for me and I can push really, really hard. This is excellent. This, this shows that he's a big, big, big champ. As inspection begins in advance of the final Super G of the season, the conditions prove to be welcoming for Switzerland's rising star, Marco Odermott. It was downhill yesterday, but I was on the snow, but I could feel the snow and it was really perfect. So should be really, really cool to ski. Marco Odermott, making his debut at a World Cup Finals, has proven he belongs and will be a force for years to come. This has been his first full season as a senior on the Men's World Cup, and what a season it has been. He's still only just 21 years of age. He's been in the top 10 in giant slalom, picked up his first podium in Crunch Gagora last weekend. He's been in the top 10 in Super G, and he started knocking on the top 20 door in downhill. With that first World Cup podium coming only a week ago, he's hoping to ride that momentum here in Andorra. Uh, it was amazing. I mean, the first World Cup career podium, it, it was just great, a perfect day for me. And of course, it's a, uh, Huge motivation and gives a lot of confidence. Marco and his 22 rivals, hoping to end the season on a high note, continue to survey the course. The athletes tend to take extra time during inspection for Super G for a good reason. Unlike the downhill, there are no practice runs in Super G. So the skiers get just one look at the course before they are thrust into competition. In downhill, you always have trainings before the day it's a race, and uh, you do the analysis on the hotel, watching video, but uh, in Super G, you get one chance, and uh, then you have to use the time you get to inspect and make the best out of it. You come to the hill in the morning, see the course, and then you have to find the perfect line, and with all the rows and uh, gates you can't see, it's not that easy, and you don't really know how the speed is, so it's difficult to find the right way. What we Norwegians always do is, is try to make the best out of it and, uh, and always uh, find the spots where 
where we can win the race, and uh, that's why we use so much time on the inspection. The stakes are immense for this race. Dominic may be the leader and the favorite to win, but there are five others closely behind, hoping to steal the top spot and the Super G Globe away from him. Paris comes into this seventh and final Super G, 44 points clear of Vincent Kriegmeier. Then we have the Vikings third and fourth, Kilder and Jetil Jandrud, with Meyer and Kaviatzel, fifth and sixth for Austria and Switzerland, also within 100 points of Dominic Paris. If Dominic succeeds in his quest for a Super G globe, it will mark the first time in eight seasons it's out of the hands of a Norwegian. Teammates Alexander Amot Kilde and Shettle Jansru are hoping to keep the streak alive. It's a tight cup, so it's going to be people that's going to give a guess to it. And I think in my own case, it's going to be really important to ski my turn and just uh, give what I have. I've been in a position before where I've been the guy leading. Now I'm the other way around. I need to attack. Dominic Paris is in amazing shape, and he also have a lot of points on me for the Super G, so need to ski real fast. Just make sure I do what I usually do. I'm very eager to go up there and prove myself. But Dominic will be tough to overtake. He's considered an old-school downhiller, bringing an all-or-nothing approach to the courses and holding nothing back. Today, even with so much on the line, will be no different. I try to push and I try to go fast. I try to win the race. I think it's not good to, to do the tactic to bring down a very uh, clean run. He's evolved a little bit on this technique. Uh, you saw him all the early years. He's had a, kind of his momentum in his skiing, a power in it, but he kept feathering a little bit in the inside of the turns and we're not really trusting that he could really go for it. And this year he doesn't do that. He goes, he skis a clean turn and still keeps his power in the turn and that is a combination which is hard to beat. The time has arrived. The search for speed begins. Now this is the first of the skiers hoping to take the Super G title here today. Mauro Kavietzel of Switzerland, sixth position. Pretty simple game plan for Mauro. He's got to win this, win it by a long way. Let's not forget, he's beaten Dominic Paris twice before. Cavienza into top position by 0.55. And this is brilliant work from Mauro Cavienza. Just what the Swiss skier needed to do. Take the lead and put the pressure on the five remaining racers looking for the Super G title. Shettle Jansrud is up next, hoping he can do enough to claim the top spot for the Norwegians for an eighth consecutive year. Jansrud comes into this competition fourth in the standings. He's got to take the lead from Kavietzel. But the three-time Super G title champ is just a little off. This is Jansrud on a recovery mission. And you see how he pays the price for the errors. Plus three sevens off Kavietzel. It's a good finish from Jansrud, but he's missed it by 0.43. For Paris, the wait is over. Dominic Paris needs a win or a top three place, and he's got the Super G title. He has the option to ski more conservatively. A top three guarantees him the globe, and a DNF would cost him the title. But Paris will stay aggressive. It's what he does best. Two hundredths of a second off the pace, but Dominic Paris here, aggressive. He means business. He's skiing at about 120 kilometers per hour. But there, Dominic Paris draws on his power reserves to get himself out of trouble. Can he find the speed? He holds the green light into that tuck position. 2042, Dominic Paris into tuck position. Well, on the edge of his game, yeah, I would say, for most of that challenge, but the risk-reward pays dividends. I want to try to push and to try to win the race and uh, nothing holding back and just giving everything. What a ski from Dominic Paris. Now we start to see if any other skiers can spoil the Italian celebration here. Austrian Vincent Kriegmeier now gets his shot at the upset and holds nothing back. 
Kriegmeier putting everything on the line. No shortage of confidence from the 27-year-old. Kriegmeier now has the finish line within his sight. The Austrian dips. He's gone, sir. Point four four. Alexander Amot Kilde then gets his chance, skiing for self and country. But sometimes it's not enough. Tilda goes down into sixth position. It looks like the seven-year rule of Super G from Norway is over. Marco Odermatt's final Super G ends in a DNF, but his fate could have been much worse. Oh, what an escape for Odermatt there, pushing it a little too much. You just want to ski as fast as possible still, and you try to do your best. And yeah, but in the air, I knew yeah, it's done for today. His own work done, Dominic must continue to play the waiting game. This is the last of the six skiers that can deny Dominic Paris. Uh, Matthias Meyer needs to take the lead here. Oh, oh well, drifting with the wind there, getting twisted and off the second jump as well. Matthias Meyer almost goes down twice. Though he stays upright, Meyer cannot afford to lose the time he does. Sixth position for the Austrian Matthias Meyer, but it is at Dominic Paris that now has done enough and cannot be beaten in the chase for the Super G title. The headlines today belong to Dominic Paris, who has won the Super G Crystal Globe for the first time in his career. Representing Italy, Dominic Paris! I'm so happy about my whole season and then to take home a globe that's mean everything that's give you uh, this back what you give the whole season today is party time <laughs>